Kayla, as we do, a person of interest is being questioned as we speak in connection with the murder of the United Healthcare CEO. Uh, we are told from our sources that this individual was in possession of a gun with a silencer and multiple fake IDs, including a fake New Jersey driver's license. You might remember that the person of interest who was pictured at the hostel on the Upper West Side, who police believe uh, he stayed there before carrying out the attack, um, that that individual used a fake New Jersey ID to check into that hostel. So uh, this came in to uh, police uh, via a tip that there was somebody traveling with multiple uh, IDs. And so that local tip, a tipster coming in from the community, helped uh, police zero in on this individual. Investigators with the NYPD uh, are en route, if not in Altoona, Pennsylvania, already to continue the questioning. Uh, they are the lead, NYPD is the lead investigative agency into this murder, but of course the FBI very involved, as is the U.S. Marshals. There was a task force, a fugitive task force, uh, pulled together immediately after the murder when uh, police realized that he might have already left town and it became a multi-state investigation. Now it's looking like police um, might have some answers in Pennsylvania, uh, but that remains to be seen. Nothing definitive yet. As you'll remember, the facial recognition software um, that was used on the image when you see the person of interest face at the hostel, that did not pop a positive ID on any one individual. So that was a major challenge for investigators. That's why it's now five days later. It's been difficult for them to zero in. Uh, they've also been hesitant to put out any name for fear of tipping off uh, the person um, who carried out this crime. And so there's been, we've been in the dark for a few days. Of course, we've had some information come uh, Friday night and over the weekend. The backpack was found in Central Park, no murder weapon in it. Uh, divers were searching in the lake in Central Park and the reservoir searching for the weapon that, that did not uh, show up. So uh, we are waiting to hear from investigators if the murder weapon is in fact the gun that was in possession of this individual who's being questioned. And that's where we are at this time, Liz. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that this all started from a tip, it sounds like, in Pennsylvania from somebody that That's right. presumably saw these images on either a newscast or on social media or on the Internet. But those it's those images, that surveillance, those surveillance pictures that are really the biggest piece of evidence, right? Because DNA was sort of inconclusive so far. And that's really it is just those pictures of the suspect. That's right, and the fingerprints that were found on a water bottle that was dropped at the scene of the crime, they were not uh, you, they were not of any value. They were just partial fingerprints, so that wasn't helpful. Uh, we are still waiting to hear if the DNA testing on the coffee cup that uh, the person, uh, the suspect who was seen at a Starbucks prior to carrying out the shooting, uh, to see if there was any DNA on that coffee cup. It was thrown into a trash bin, and our understanding it was the only coffee cup in there, so it was easy to identify it as having belonged to the suspect. Uh, we are still waiting to hear back if any DNA came back, but that's gonna help prosecutors once they are sure uh, who they believe carried this out to sort of paint a timeline and place that person with, you know, DNA evidence uh, near the scene of the crime. So all this, this is like a multi-pronged investigation where all these different elements are being investigated in tandem at the same time, and they will all be drawn together uh, as uh, prosecutors build a case. Right now where we're at, we have a person of interest being questioned in Pennsylvania. Uh, and we'll see, of course, that the fact that he was in possession with a fake New Jersey ID is yet another clue uh, and a gun with a silencer. Uh, but we cannot report for sure that this is the suspect or even mm -hmm. that the gun was the same gun that was used. Their investigators are taking their time and they wanna be 100% sure.
Anna, do investigators believe that this suspect is some sort of professional when it comes to this sort of thing, given his handling of the gun and given his attention to detail with all of this? But there were mistakes being made. Have you gotten, gotten any kind of indication they believe that this individual is, is a professional killer? At this point, the experts that we've been talking to don't believe that he is a professional killer, but he also did a lot of things right. We're five days out, um, and if this is, turns out to be the suspect, uh, that's you know five long days where he was on the run. He was able to uh, escape detection in New York City and depart the city. Um, and if it's not, you know, this could be an international manhunt uh, in the making. So um, the people I'm talking to, they, while it did appear that he had some facility using this gun, it jammed at one point and he continued, he fixed it and was able to continue uh, carrying out the attack with firing um, on one more shot after the jam. Also the silencer, he had to sort of pull back the rack before each shot was fired. That suggests he had facility with this gun. He also remained relatively calm, outwardly calm. He didn't immediately run away, which might have drawn attention to him. He walked across the street before he started to pick up the pace. That's according to the surveillance footage. Um, and then the fact that he had a mask on and then switched into a surgical mask from the ski mask, uh, that was pretty smart on his part. So he did some things right to cover his tracks and evade detection, but uh, investigators believe that they will ultimately uh, find, catch him in, in a mistake that leads them to him. I want to talk a little bit about the motive that investigators are looking into, specifically pointing to those key pieces of evidence, the writings on the bullet casings, the monopoly money found in the backpack, all point to some sort of uh, animosity towards a healthcare industry or greed or corporate greed. What, inv what are investigators saying about that into a possible motive? Well, that's exactly right, Liz. From day one, from Wednesday, when investigators uh, recovered the three bullets and the three shell casings um, at the scene of the crime, and they noticed that the words deny, delay, and depose were written in a Sharpie meticulously on the bullets and the shell casings. That's very unusual. And that immediately put them onto a motive. Uh, they, of course, um, they were running down a list of potential suspects names, uh, trying to find clues as to motives. That uh, effort is still underway, but those words written on the bullets were the first clue. Then Monopoly money uh, found in the backpack that was discarded into Central, in Central Park, that again suggests almost like a, a message, um, kind of like a like trolling of the uh, healthcare insurance industry, um, a nod to the uh, high compensation packages that the uh, executive uh, team often brings in, also the high revenues that the companies pull in um, from people who uh, pay to have their insur insurance, um, and contrasting that with uh, the denials that that people sometimes get and you've heard there's been an upswell on social media of people frustrated with the health insurance companies who've denied their claims uh, so there's been a um, really an unprecedented backlash following a murder like this where people uh, seemed they were almost rooting for the perpetrator um, yeah. which is really chilling since a man was just gunned down in cold blood on 54th Street in the middle of Midtown Manhattan. Yeah. All right, Anna Schechter, thank you so much.